India is set to finalize a $5 billion partnership to develop a cutting-edge sixth-generation engine for its Amca Mark II stealth fighter jets. With Francis Safran leading the race over Rolls-Royce and GE, this deal promises full technology transfer and local production, bringing India one step closer to becoming a global aerospace powerhouse. Slated for production by 2032-33, the new engine will feature adaptive cycle technology delivering unmatched thrust, fuel efficiency and super cruise capabilities, a game-changer for India's air dominance. So while the initial AMCA MK-1 squadrons will feature GE F414 engines, the AMCA Mark IIs will usher in a new era, revolutionizing India's air power by 2040. This strategic move places India in an elite league of aerospace innovators, catapulting the nation from being a tech importer to a creator of next-generation military technologies. But that's not all. Apart from foreign collaboration, it has now been revealed domestic industry giants may also be roped in to manufacture a 100% indigenous Indian fighter jet engine. India's journey towards military self-reliance is taking off quite literally. In a significant show of force for the country's aerospace ambitions, reports suggest top private players, including Larsen & Tubro, Godridge Aerospace, as well as Kalyani Group, have stepped up to power a crucial piece of India's defense future, a next-generation 110 kilonewton thrust fighter jet engine that will form the beating heart of the upcoming advanced medium combat aircraft or the AMCA. This engine, built entirely on Indian soil, would mark a historic first for the country. A fully indigenous, high-thrust military jet engine designed without direct foreign manufacturing help. But the stakes are high, and so is the challenge. The engine program is led by the Gas Turbine Research Establishment, or the GTRE, under the DRDO. It has set itself a tight runway, just seven to nine years. The goal is to match the development timeline of the AMCA stealth fighter itself, which is expected to join the Indian Air Force by 2035. Now, while that timeline is ambitious, perhaps even optimistic, it's underpinned by growing private sector muscle. Larsen & Tubro, Godrej Aerospace and Kalyani are no strangers to global aerospace game. They've long been producing precision components and equipment for the likes of Rolls-Royce and Safran. So their expertise in high-precision manufacturing, exotic materials and specialized welding gives India a strong industrial base to build on. But the military engines, insiders caution, is a completely different beast. Unlike commercial jet engines, which prioritize efficiency and durability, military engines must perform under extreme stress, handling soaring temperatures, rapid throttle shifts and intense combat conditions. And that's where the challenge lies. Creating an engine of this caliber from scratch is possible, but without a mature ecosystem in place, it could realistically take 12 to 15 years." Unquote. An industry source pointed out. That gap between aspiration and reality has triggered quiet discussions about whether a foreign partner may eventually be brought in, despite the initial intention to go fully indigenous. Talks about potential technology transfers or co-development agreements with global engine giants are reportedly already underway. For GTRE and the DRDO, the holy grail isn't just building the engine, it's owning it. Securing full intellectual property rights, or IPR, is viewed as vital to ensuring long-term control over modifications, upgrades and strategic use as needed. GTRE officials have made it clear, India wants to own its engine, not lease its future. Now that autonomy becomes even more important as the country eyes future innovations like variable cycle engines, a cutting-edge technology that offers adaptability and fuel efficiency for next-generation fighters. While still a long-term vision, success with the 110 kN engine is seen as a crucial stepping stone. So the DRDO is exploring both these options, 
Firstly, to develop an engine with a foreign partner like Safran, GE or Rolls-Royce. And secondly, to use the knowledge gained from the Kaveri project and along with the private sector collaboration, develop an indigenous Indian fighter jet engine. DRDO chief Samir Kamath recently elaborated on the technical challenges, saying, quote, Aero engine technology is a very complex technology. However, we have learnt a lot from the Kaveri. Kaveri was a fourth generation engine and the current engine technology has moved to sixth generation. So we want to work with a foreign OEM to reduce the risks as well as cut down the time for development. Hopefully, we will have some good news on this in the next few months." Unquote. All top three contenders, including France's Safran, UK's Rolls-Royce and American GE, have offered full cooperation, with Safran and Rolls-Royce assuring 100% tech sharing. The next big step would be a commitment to complete manufacturing in India to develop an ecosystem within the country. This ecosystem would also help in the development of the indigenous jet engine with private players like Larsen and Tubro, Goldrej Aerospace or the Kalyani Group. The urgency around the engine program is closely tied to the broader Amka fighter jet project, India's answer to stealthy fifth-generation aerial fighters by its neighbours. Recently cleared for full development by the Cabinet Committee on Security, the AMCA is being designed by the Aeronautical Development Agency to rival top-tier fighters globally. Think stealth capabilities, supersonic cruising without afterburners, advanced avionics and internal weapon base. The project's first version, the AMCA Mark I, will initially fly with an imported General Electric F414 engine the same as the Tejas MK2 jet. But the end game is the AMCA Mark II, which will feature the new Made in India engine, potentially developed through strategic international collaboration. If successful, India will join an elite club of nations including the US, Russia and China that can field homegrown stealth fighters. The AMCA isn't just about aerial prowess, it's about positioning India as a 21st century defence powerhouse. With the Tejas NK-1A already entering service and the more advanced Tejas Mark II on the horizon, the AMCA project is part of a broader rearmament and indigenization strategy aimed at replacing legacy aircraft and strengthening air dominance in an increasingly contested region. India's bold push to design a cutting-edge military jet engine at home is more than just a technological challenge. It's a test of national resolve, industry maturity and strategic clarity. The involvement of private heavyweights signals a changing tide in India's defence sector, one that could redefine its aerospace capabilities for decades to come. So whether the final solution is 100% indigenous or forged through international partnerships, one thing is clear. The the engine of India's future air power is already roaring to life. But what do you believe? How important is it for India to have its own fighter jet engine? India's drive towards defence self-sufficiency has been dented by the Comptroller and Auditor General or CAG raising serious shortcomings in HAL's RUAV-200 drone programme. Initiated in 2015 at a cost of 23.18 crore rupees, the rotary wing UAV was meant to demonstrate HAL's competence in unmanned aerial vehicles. The program, however, suffered from rudimentary planning, no user consultation or market survey was conducted before development. The outcome, a drone with very little value. Only 2.5 kg payload capacity, 1 hour of flight time and 8 to 10 km radius, well below today's military standards. The Indian Defence Forces were not interested and it resulted in a 19.5 crore rupee monetary loss. The report calls for significant changes in HAL's strategy, emphasising user-centric design and accountability, warning that such expensive lapses would jeopardise India's Atmanirbhar Bharat defence plans. Leave a comment with your opinion, hit the like button and subscribe to InConnect News.